Let's do some science. Am I a bad plant parent? Not my fault, not my fault. It's the soil's fault. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma and today we're gonna be talking about soil pH. Do you have like a plant that's ailing, dying slowly and you don't know what's wrong with it, you've tried everything, you just can't seem to figure out what's wrong? Well, it could be soil pH. If the pH of the soil of your plant is not what it prefers, it may prevent like normal growth in your plant. It can stop it from absorbing nutrients as well. So before I get into like pH and all that stuff and testing, I just want to say if you like this video please give it a thumbs up down below and comment on other things you'd like me to do plant wise and subscribe for more. So yeah, let's get into it. First off, science lesson, what is pH? pH stands for potential hydrogen. The pH scale is a scale that measures how many hydrogen or hydroxyl ions are within whatever you're testing, whether it be soil, water, any anything really that you're testing. And the scale goes from 0 to 14. pH 7 is neutral. That's the pH of water. It should be neutral. Any pH less than 7 is acidic and any pH more than 7 is alkaline. Alkaline is also known as basic. Maybe that's just an Americanism, but I always knew it as acidic or basic. But I'm gonna try and use alkaline because I think that's the more scientific term for it all. But yeah, that's just a basic rundown of what pH is. What is pH when it comes to soil? So typically soil pH is somewhere between 4 and 9. The ideal for most soils is typically between 5.5 and, and 7, but it really depends on the plant. Some plants prefer it to be a little bit lower than that and some plants prefer it to be a bit higher. So it really depends and it's probably worth looking up what the pH is best for each plant that you have because it will be slightly different. Different plant nutrients from like fertilizer and stuff is available at different pH levels, but most are available between five and a half to seven. So that is why that's typically the ideal because that's where most of your plant's nutrients are available. If the pH of your soil is too low, so too acidic, it can have toxic levels of manganese in the soil and that can be pretty harmful to your plant. Also, low pH levels can liberate aluminum, which isn't good for your plant and could stunt the plant's growth. So we want to avoid having pH levels that are too low, but also pH levels that are too high could mean that molybdenum, I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm not quite sure. I'm by far not a chemist. I did not go to school for chemistry. I took AP chemistry in high school, but that's besides the point. Molybdenum will be at toxic levels if the pH is too high, so if it is too alkaline. So it's good to try and keep it in the middle between five and a half and seven because that is the ideal. And we don't want our plants to get poisoned because of bad pH levels. So how do we test pH levels in soil? First off, you could get a pH meter. I've seen like ones that come within your water meter. Apparently those are pretty accurate, but they tend to be a bit more expensive. So if you have the budget, those are probably the best thing to do. I personally don't have a budget. So I bought myself a pH testing kit. This is a cheaper option, but the margin for error is a bit higher. So you might not get quite as accurate of results. So take everything with a grain of salt. For the kit I used, I didn't personally need to use water with it. But if your kit does require you to use water, make sure you're using distilled water because that is pH neutral. So today I tested soil from four different plants and my own personal soil mix, which I use for a wide variety of plants just to see, just to see what their levels were. Different plants have different preferences. And so the little book that came with my kit showed the preferences for those specific plants, but I'll make sure to include links and stuff down below of other lists that I found online. But I tested it from a Peperomia, my umbrella plant, an Anthurium, and a Sansevieria. So I tested some of those because my plants weren't doing super hot, some have died, some are doing great, but I wanted to see if the pH level might have been affecting what was going on with the plant. Also my personal mix because I want to see if it's generally a good level for the majority of plants and 
yeah. So let's cut to that footage of me doing all the tests. Tried to slide, it didn't work. Welcome to my kitchen. Let's do some science. I harvested the soil as per the instructions in the kit. It told me to dig down a little bit into the soil. So like remove the top two and a half centimeters or inch or so, and then try and go for more of the deeper soil where the roots are more. So I gathered some soil samples from that. And then you've got to like remove all the like chunks from it. You don't want any branches or sticks or rocks or big chunks in there because it says so. So I, sieved those out. So I've got some nice smooth samples here, which uh, hopefully will be good enough. And I've let this soil dry out overnight for about 24 hours because the soil sample is meant to be dry. So I let it dry out naturally. Let's get started. I think I'm going to do my mix first, just because I'm curious, you know, I want to know what it is, but I'm going to do my mix first and show you the process for this one. And then I will do the rest. See what the pH is, you know, good stuff. And you fill this test tube up to the one milliliter mark with the soil. So I'm just gonna use this little scoopy doop. And then I need to add one scoop of this barium sulfate powder. So I'm gonna do that. Then I need to add this pH testing solution up to the two and a half mil mark. And then I get to add the lid and give it a good shake. Shake, 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 shake. And then I am going to leave this to settle for 10 minutes. And we'll see what color it is. See if it's acidic or basic or what. So, yeah. So here it is after 10 minutes and based off the chart, I think it is like 7.5, which I think is quite high compared to most of the soils on this like chart. Most of them start at around five and go to about six and a half. So 7.5 is like super alkaline or basic for a soil. I mean, plenty of them go up to seven and a half like a lot of them do but i feel like typically soil is much more acidic so maybe i need to add something to my soil mixture to make it more acidic seven and a half that's so alkaline i'm nervous now what if that's why my plants don't do super well when i repot them in my own soil my bad plant parent. Ah. So I think based off of this chart, it's probably somewhere in the six or six and a half range which is definitely more acidic. In this booklet, it says the anthurium soil should be five to six. So, if it is actually six, I could probably bring the acidity up a little bit in this one, make it slightly more acidic. So hopefully it would be like a five. Oh my God, this stuff is so acidic. It is like bright red, bright red, um, which is about four and a half. And I think that might be why my umbrella tree wasn't doing so well. I'm gonna blame it on that because I don't wanna admit that I might be a bad plant parent. But in this book, it says umbrella trees should have like a five to 7.5 pH. This is a four and a half. That is way too acidic, wait, like half a point. This is too acidic for that plant. So maybe it was just the soil, like it could have also been me, but I'm gonna blame the soil. Ding! Not my fault, not my fault. It's the soil's fault. Oh, let's have a look, let's see. So, it's six, it's definitely pH six. It, it looks six-ish. Let's see what pepperonian needs. Five to six, bang! We're in it. Maybe the plant's dying because it had thrips and all the leaves fell off. 
I can't blame it on the soil. <laughs> so this was the last one. And it's the same as Beria, obviously. And let's check out the color. It looks like it's probably about pH 7, which is neutral. Sansevieria, pH 4.5 to 7. So yes, it could be super acidic, but it goes all the way to neutral. So I'd say the soil is doing fine. And my Sansevieria is looking great, which is awesome. I'm gonna have to say it must be fine. It's fine, everything's fine, I'm fine. This is so interesting, like, I love figuring out this stuff. Like obviously pH isn't the only thing that you need to look for when it comes to soil, but like, oh, this is just so fascinating. I love science. That was really fun. I really, really, really enjoyed doing the chemistry of those pH testing kits. It was so fun. So let's talk about fixing the pH of soil. So if the pH of the soil is drastically off, you should probably repot your plant. But it's more than likely that small adjustments will be fine in order to balance the pH to your plant's preferences. In order to raise the pH or lower the acidity, you can add things like limestone, nitric acid, and phosphoric acid to your soil. Typically, you'll get a limestone sort of thing. So in order to raise the acidity or lower the pH number, you can use things such as sulfur, potash, or potassium bicarbonate. But typically you'll have some sort of sulfate to add into your soil, which will make it a bit more alkaline or more basic. These soil additives are pretty widely available in powder or pellet form, but basically how they work is you lay them on top of the soil and they don't dissolve in water or anything. And so when you do water, it kind of brings them down into the soil a bit and they'll gradually raise or lower the pH to balance it out a bit more. So because I noticed more of my soils tended to be a more alkaline than my liking, and I wanna lower the pH, make it more acidic, I think I'm probably gonna get something just to add to my soil to balance it out a bit better. I think this could help let my plants gather more nutrients, nutrients that they need to survive and thrive. If I do, I'll make a video about it or an IGTV or a reel or TikTok or post on Instagram or something. I will share it with the world if I'm getting stuff to like change the pH of my soil. I will, I'll figure it out. I also wanna add that maintaining your pH is not like a one and done kind of thing. The pH of your soil will change over time, especially if you're using things like fertilizers. Those can affect the pH of your soil as well as tap water because it's not perfectly seven neutral pH it can affect your soil pH. So it's good to check every now and then that your soil pH is what your plants need or if your plants are experiencing really slow growth or a bunch of problems growing, it might be a good idea to check pH and see what's going on to see if it's something that you can fix. So yeah, that is it, that is me learning about soil pH, testing soil pH for a bunch of different soils and really enjoying the soil pH testing process. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it fun and entertaining, watching me be a science laboratory worker in my kitchen, please give this video a thumbs up and comment down below other houseplant things you'd like me to talk about next and subscribe for more. So thank you so much. And I will see you next time. Bye. Oh, almost dropped that. Okay, let's. Did drop it. it says add one scoop of Ufa. <sighs>